people are frustrated, especially when those who have served our country in uniform have been treated the way they have, and God forbid, who have perished because of the mess uh, at the VA. And I, I will tell you, I am disturbed uh, by uh, statements out of the White House that say uh, that the president heard about this in the news. It is time for our president to, be, to come forward and take responsibility for this and do the right thing by these veterans and begin to show uh, that he actually cares about getting it straight. All right, more outrage in Washington, of course, over that VA scandal. And, you know, every time there's another problem in Washington, it seems like we hear that President Obama hears about it first on media reports. Then he holds a stern news conference and he says, by gosh, someone's going to pay. And then I, maybe I just lose focus, but I, I don't see that much happening. And, and of course, a lot of people keep wanting to call him to account as well for o Obamacare and the misdeeds there. And it seemed like it took an awful long time for the White House to kind of come to grips with the idea it had a big problem on its hand. And, you know, during the Obamacare era, nothing like talking to a doctor, an expert, and a person who actually has been through the actual effects that are going on now. And that's why we're bringing in Dr. Richard Amerling. He is Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine, a renowned academic nephrologist at the Beth Israel Medical Center in New York City. And he joins us to discuss Obamacare and the VA scandal. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Amerling. And let me just start with the toughest question of this interview. Sure. Nephrologist. Kidney, what is it? Kidney disease. Gotcha. Okay. Because right. otherwise I'd heard something like reading bumps on the head like a psychic. There's That's, some other... Yeah, phrenologist. Oh, different from... No okay, <laughs> good. So what is your basic take on Obamacare and what's the main argument you want to prosecute today? Well, Obamacare is increasing the bureaucratization of medicine in a major way. Medicine's been going in that direction for many years, as, as I'm sure you know, really beginning with uh, third-party payment, Medicare, Medicaid back in the 60s, the HMOs, etc it's harder and harder to see a doctor and just you know settle up with them. It's got to go through multiple layers of administration. The administrative sector has expanded massively compared to the actual clinical, sector. clinical sector. And that's where the money is going. And uh, you know, this is my take on Obamacare. Obamacare is going to spend massive amounts of money on more and more administrators and less and less on patient care. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. You know, it seems to me, if memory serves, not that I was uh, an adult in the 60s, I wasn't, but every time government takes another big step into health care, the medical industry resists and resists because they're so afraid of price controls. But later, the medical industry thrives because any time billions of dollars in new m government money moves into a sector, it, a rising tide does lift all boats. I mean, Medicare, people have told me, is what made doctors rich suddenly. That when you first became a doctor in the 30s and 40s, it wasn't you went into it to be rich. That only came after government largesse. Then look, Dr. Amberling, at, uh, at, at uh, Medicare coverage of prescription drugs. The drug industry fought that for 30 years because it feared price controls. But once government starts paying for, for, for more prescriptions, it turns out more people take more drugs and spend more money. So aren't you doctors ultimately going to get rich off Obamacare? Unfortunately not. Now, er, early on, doctors did get w wealthy off of Medicare, and they were, in a way, bribed into taking it. That's how it, that's how it got underway. Uh, doctors were paid the u usual customary and reasonable charges that they were used to charging and they found that they could charge patients on an easier way because you know someone else was paying right. and the patients were there and they were ready to you know come and see the doctors and and that's really when uh, healthcare inflation started to take off was with Medicare and Medicaid right but of course the price controls came later and they ratcheted down the reimbursement to doctors to the point where it's actually costing doctors money to see some Medicare patients the way it's and costing them to see yeah they're get, taking a loss on Medicaid patients Medicare patients are becoming that way and that's why it's getting harder and harder for Medicare patients to find especially primary care physicians. Yeah. Now build the bridge for us, will you, between Obamacare and the VA scandal because it seems to me kind of a convenient conservative excuse to play devil's advocate here to say, oh, you see Obamacare, that's just like the VA. Uh, aren't these really different animals or are they, is one indicative of the other? I, I think they're similar in this way. They are both large government run bureaucracies and they all share certain things in common a very heavy administrative presence, very heavy administrative load in terms of how much money is absorbed by that sector, and harder and harder to actually get the money to where it's going to do the most good, which is with the doctors and, and taking care of patients. Yeah. And the hurdles 
uh, that doctors have to go through in both systems to actually take care of patients. The incentives to see patients, and this is part of what I've been arguing about for years, which is they are trying to, they meaning the, the elites in medicine and the uh, healthcare, mm -hmm. the healthcare uh, professionals, uh, controllers, the central planners, are trying to eliminate fee-for-service medicine. That is a direct assault on primary, pra primary care uh, private practice medicine. Yes. If a doctor can't just ask for a rate and get it in a, in a direct manner, that ends primary care direct pay, direct pay medicine. Yes. They want all doctors in salaried positions, either for the government, working for the government directly or for hospitals, where they can then control them and sort of tell them what to do. Right. And that's what Obamacare is going towards, and that's why it's similar to the VA. Now help me out on something. I had lunch with a, a, another journalist the other day whose husband is a, a surgeon of some kind, and she said, oh, he's, he's not just a surgeon, he has his practice, but he also consults to a research firm. He said, and she said, no doctor today has only one main job, their practice. All these doctors now are moonlighting doing other things because they've had to, in part because of the government uh, uh, intervening in healthcare. Do you know anything about this? Oh, absolutely, uh, it's, it's very true. It's very hard for doctors to make enough money to support the sort of lifestyle that they thought they were going to have when they went into medicine in the first place. Doctors really are a devoted group. They, they want to do a good job by patients, but they also don't want to have to worry about meeting their mortgage payments. Right. And I've been, told by different people, you know, wh what about the Hippocratic Oath? Well, I like to say it's not an oath of poverty. Right. Right? Doctors are not signing up to live like a monk. And if you want doctors to live like monks, then you're not going to get very good doctors. And I also tell people, what would you think if you went to see a lawyer and they were getting paid $30 to see you, which is what Medicaid pays a doctor because for Because government capped it and said that's all we're <laughs> right. going to pay. Right. I think I'd want to hire a, a lawyer working for $60 or $90 <laughs> an hour rather than, than, right. than, than $30. Right. Well, is there any way at this point to fix any of this? Are we stuck? Does it turn out that, that Obamacare, like every government program, you know what, you never see them kill a government program. Yeah. The Bureau of Weights and Measures, I think, has been around since about 1898, when I think we kind of know that 12 inches is a foot. I'm not sure we need the Bureau <laughs> of Weights and Measures, and yet it's never disappeared. Yeah. They've been trying to, to eliminate the Energy Department for 30 or 40 years. I mean, is there any fixing this? Well, we're not going to get rid of uh, government-run health care in one fell swoop. We're certainly not going to get rid of the VA system. It's a huge, huge uh, bureaucracy, huge institution with hospitals all over the place. What we can do is try to improve the way they run these institutions by, in, by putting in correct incentives, such as a fee-for-service system, for, exa for example, for physicians. If you pay the physicians in the VA system on a fee-for-service basis, I guarantee you that those waiting lists are going to disappear very quickly. Fee-for-service instead of what? Instead of DRGs? a salary. Instead of a salary. I mean, the, pay, oh. the doctors are salaried for the most part in the VA system. Right, and, and, right but, but we see these scandals come out where this doctor billed $10 million worth of procedures because he's churning it all through there, and then you almost criticize the guys who were doing fee-for-service. Well, that, that was a big thing. The release of the, the dump of the data, of the Medicare billing data and the payment data for physicians, uh, everybody was running around screaming, look how much money these right. doctors are making. The, the real number was that these doctors were making about 17% in total of the Medicare budget. So the real question should have been, where is the rest of the money going? Right. The doctors aren't responsible for the high Medicare costs. It's everything else. It's all the administrators, right. all the hospital costs, et cetera. Does privatizing the VA look like it actually would be a helpful solution? Do you think a privately run hospital system that's owned by shareholders would be doing these secret waiting lists and lying about wait times and all the stuff that we're seeing alleged about the VA? Definitely, I don't think so. I really think that this is a manifestation of a government-run bureaucracy where you put in a, a mandate, let's say, to see patients within a certain time frame. And of course, they can't do it. They can't just make it happen. So they have to then work around it and, and create a, a fudge so that they can look good on paper. But doesn't uh, a privately held company uh, fudge the numbers all the time, cooking the books on Wall Street? Well, maybe, but at least they're accountable ultimately to the shareholders and the trustees, right? Someone is watching the bottom mm -hmm. line, which is not true of government-run agencies. Okay, so if, um, tell us a fix now that can be done with Obamacare that's, that stops short of this, this pipe dream of wiping out the entire law. We're never gonna be able to wipe out the entire law, are we? 
I don't know. Uh, it, it would be extremely difficult. You're going to have to have a massive change in leadership, not only in Congress, but at the top. Uh, and we're a long way from there. But I think a fix would be for individual patients and physicians to decide to go around the system. Patients have to decide. They're not going to be enslaved by this Obamacare right. health insurance. They're not going to be paying these high premiums and high deductibles for and, care not, they don't need. and not be able to get uh, care when right. they need it. Yeah, actually, the, 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 you might be just better to go out and buy it on your own. All right, thank you so uh, very much for being with us. Uh, we appreciate you. Richard Amerling, uh, doctor upset about Obamacare. And up next, the best of Give Me Five. And also, we're going to have Jonathan Tobin here and much more. I'm Dennis Neal in for Steve Malsberg on Newsmax TV. Be right back. <laughs>